Hi, my name is Thane Walton. I live in Mesa, Arizona. I come from a family of Pinewood Derby fanatics. And after helping with many people uh, over the years, trying to make our uh, pack meeting as competitive as possible, because when I was young, I liked to run away from the race and uh, you know try and smoke everyone. But as I got older, I'm like, let's have competitive races. Let me get, let me give all the tricks I can to the guys I know. So. I'm going to go over some of the tricks that uh, have helped us win many races over the years. And these are, these are my top five tips for a fast car. Number one, work on wheels and axles. We'll talk about that. Flat body and weight and back. Ride on three wheels. Angle the axles. And rail riding. So let's start with working on the wheels and axles. So, with the axles especially, you want you want to get these polished. Uh, put put this in the drill bit where my uh, fingers are, and just spin that in the drill. And you want to pol polish that, uh, you know, first with a file and get all the burrs off, and then eventually uh, get it up to like 1,500 or 2,000 grit sandpaper. Just spin in that thing, and just shine that thing. You can't tell very much here, but it but it's super shiny. The edges, uh, you want them beveled, the, the edge of the nail you want beveled away from the tire to have as less friction as possible. Same thing with the wheel, you want it smooth and uh, you know, make sure there's no burrs on it. You can actually buy a lot of stuff uh, online if you, if you want to spend a little money. Um, some of the stuff I've bought over the years, a lot of it we've just done on our own. But uh, so shine that up. You can actually plug this in the drill, drill as well. Get it spinning. Uh, you know, here's a little pipe cleaner. I'll dip that in uh, graphite, and I'll I'll run it through here and and you know put that on the spinner and spin it. Really get the inside smooth, and uh, get all the graphite on there. Then, you know, once that axle is super shiny, you want to put as much graphite as you can in here, and just spin it and work. You know, work that so there's it will it will spin for 20 or 30 seconds when it's well graphite. You know, lots of graphite on there. So that's by far the best thing you can do if you want to have a fast car is work a lot on your wheels and axles. Number two, flat body and weight and back. So here's my four fastest cars. You can see they're all nice and thin. Uh, some of them are super thin. You know, these two, for example. You know, that that is a you know super thin car made for speed, all the weights that back here where my thumb is, and uh, you know, I even had to list on that that's the bottom of the car so we wouldn't actually put it upside down. But So nice and thin. Um, here's the, the latest and greatest is putting these little fins on the front and back for a little bit more aerodynamic. Uh, you can buy those or you can just spend time and carve them. It, it's a trade-off if you know you're adding a little bit of weight up front with with the two fenders, uh, the back, you know, the, the guys who are the top racers, uh, my, my dad's in a league in Salt Lake City, and they all put the fins on them, so that's the, this is the fastest car I got, and uh, we'll race it in a minute. So, nice flat body, thin, uh, weight in the back, so even here, you know, I totally hollowed this out, all the weight's in the back here. You're gonna get the, you're gonna get that last little bit of gravity pull. At the bottom of the track, as it zips off, uh, you want that little extra weight in the back. Ride on three wheels. So you'll see, if, as I tap these these uh, cars, see that wheel's not touching. That wheel doesn't touch. Doesn't touch. Doesn't touch. I mean, that one's super obvious. I mean, you get down here, you can see how far off the ground that that wheel is. But you know, so, so those all free spin freely just sitting here. So only three wheels are touching the ground. A little less friction, friction and uh, you know, faster ride. All right, these last two are, the, just the last couple years, this has been the, the trend for the fastest cars. You know, guys, with, with people having their own tracks now and uh, testing and doing a lot of different stuff, here's what they figured out. Angle the axles and ride the rail. Here's what that means. So from the rear here, if I get really close, you can you might be able to tell. So that one. So see how those back wheels, 
the back wheels are actually angled away from the body. So like this on that side and like that on the other side. So they're, they're angled away from the body, away from the track. You, know, you can see them slightly angled uh, so that only the, inside only the inside part of the tire is touching. See that on that yellow car? You can see it's just barely touching on the inside and it's angled away. Now, the opposite for the front. The front, you have angled inward. So this, this is the tire that touches. This one's not touching, so, so it's angled inward. See how, uh, if I get low enough here, see how there's some space in there. You can tell that the, the wheel is angled in. So the, the front angled inward, the back angled outward. And then that goes along with the last one, rail riding. So what that does, we'll put this down here and I'll show you. So with, with the angled wheels, so the back is angled away from the body, the front tire is angled uh, like such. What happens is only the inside part of that wheel is gonna touch the rail because what, I, what I've done with testing is made this so that this car actually veers inward. This is the wheel that touches. I want that wheel to run into the track. That's called rail riding. So as I push this, see how it's, 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 veering, to, it's veering to the left and this wheel right here will be riding the, whale, the, the rail. So as I put it up here on the track, um, so I have it on the track here. The back wheels angled away from the track so they'll never, they'll never touch the rail. This front wheel is the one that, that touches and it's going to ride into the rail and it's going to, it's going to hug the rail the whole way down. That, that avoids us from getting a little bit of the wobble at the end of the race. Uh, they used to say 10, 15 years ago, they used to say, you want this car to go straight as possible. Well, at the end of the race, you get, you get a lot of wiggle. We don't get any wiggle in these because they hug the rail and no wiggle means no vibration, no bouncing and it's a smooth ride. So let's line these up. One, two, three, four. My four fastest cars I got here. Let's make sure they're all lined up straight. So see how that wheels, you know, they're not even touching there. They're all smooth placed. And this guy, the fastest one of all. So we'll see if they, if they go in order here. One, two, three, four, as we race them down the track. Bam. Hopefully you can see it. I, I didn't want to run and bounce around, but uh, sure enough, one, two, three, four, 3.0, 3.0, 3.11, 3.14. On a 40 foot track, anything, uh, when I got that number one car all lubed up, I've actually broken 2.99, uh, you know, broken the three second barrier on a 40 foot track, which is super fast for a standard Cub Scout car. So those are the tips. Hope that helped. Again, uh, you know, I know it's a little bit long video, but if you do those four, those five things, and especially the wheels and the axles, that's the A number one most important. You can have a great Pinewood Derby winner and have fun building with your son. Thanks.